All right. Well, I will. Um, I will begin with a word of prayer. So I think everybody's here is here. It seems safe to say. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you again for your many blessings to us. I thank you for these students. Just ask that you'd uh, guide our steps today. Help us to understand the math that we need to, and uh, help me to uh, troubleshoot the equipment when it breaks. In your name, I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. I've been warned that this document camera is sketchy. So, um, so you got about 30 seconds here, and then I'm going to close this. You guys do the homework? Almost done. It's good. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, enough of this. All right. So I'm All right, I guess I'll do this. So as usual, my office hours are still where they were. If um, I should mention this. I mean to put up a sign on my door. If you ever go to my office hours and for whatever reason I'm not there, the odds are very high that I'm just in the math department talking to somebody. And so the math department is just the same level here. So like my office is at the end of the hall, the math department's like in the middle of the hallway, in the back of the building. So, um, and um, anyway. So just a reminder, here's what we were talking about at the end of last class. I want to do another example of this for you. We talked about Shannon. Uh, in 1939, he realized that symbolic logic and switches had a natural correspondence, which means that you can implement logic, right? Logical statements, you can implement it with circuits. And um, this turned out to be a very important observation, right? Because, um, well, computers. <laughs> right? So computers are built on this idea, essentially. Um, the switches got much tinier, right? As we discovered transistors, and the transistor um, replaced the vacuum tube, and you know, the switches got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So, so small now that we carry around computers on our phones, right? There's hardly anything electronic that doesn't have some stupid computer in it. Like there are doubtless more microprocessors on this earth than there have ever been humans. Um, okay. Anyway, um, so if we have um, two switches in series like this, this corresponds to the AND uh, because they both have to be closed in order to the c for the current to flow. So series is like Conjunction, parallel is like disjunction. The only way that current can't flow through both of these is if they're both open. All right. So just reminding, we talked about this last time, and we looked at the following example. We said, okay, so here's a circuit, P, Q, and then R, and then not P here. Um, again, the P and the not P means that when the, the when the P switch is closed, the not P switch is open, and vice versa. So they're linked. Um, and then the question was, determine the logical combination of P, Q, and R, which is equivalent to the set of linked switches pictured above. And um, so what we said was it was P or Q, because that's the top piece, P or Q, all right? And then um, or R and not P. So the R and not P is the series combination right here, right? And those, that series combination and that parallel combination is in parallel with each other, all right? So this was an example. And I thought, to be fair to you, it would be helpful for you to see more examples, right? Um, so here's some example. Example one, example two, example three, all right? Now, 
I'm going to put that over here for myself. And I'm going to try to work it out here on this handy dandy document camera. See how it goes. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Ah, you can do it. All right, so I, um, here's my hello world. I flip that over there. I have a limited supply of paper today, so we're going to work on this paper. All right, here we go. So we're looking at, if I can find my pen here, P and Q and R all together or not P. All right? So the way I'm going to describe this, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take care of this guy. If you have P and Q and R, that means that we're going to do three switches in series. It's just going to look like this. P, Q, R. All right? So that circuit element right there, the only way that circuit uh, current flows from here to here is if all three switches are closed, right? So this is like the conjunction of P, Q, and R, all right? Now, it's this big combination um, or not P. So I'll put not P down here, right? So I want this not P to be or that, right? So what I do is I put all of this in parallel with that. So I just join them like this here. Like that. Anyway, that's one way to draw the circuit, okay? So this logical sentence is equivalent to this switching circuit. So that was, what was this example one, right? Any questions? All right, so let me put up the next one. See if you can figure this one out before I do it, okay? Example two. By the way, um, I loaded the slides into Top Hat this time. I haven't done that before. Can you guys actually see the slides when they're not up here on your phone? Yeah. What? Yeah. So you can still see example two on your phone or computer if you want to look at it right now, right? Um, I don't intend for you to have to have your phone or computer out to understand the lecture. I'm just saying if you have it, it's helpful to you at the moment. But anyway, I'm going to write it up here anyway. So P or Q, right? And what? Um, S or T. So how do we, how do we get or? We do what? Parallel. So look at this. The, the, the big idea here is that we're doing two things anded together, right? Yep. For example, two brackets for S and P instead of um, for Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that doesn't have any particular meaning for me. Okay. Um, but good question. Uh, I, I was trying to, I'm, I'm trying to use brackets. What I'm trying to do is do parentheses on the inside and then brackets on the outside, like when we have nested things. But here I just randomly put brackets on one and parentheses on the other. They're I can't explain it. <laughs> My best explanation to you is Jeremiah 17.9. So, um, so you, you, can, you can look it up if you want. Anybody know it? Jeremiah 17.9? No? No? Okay. So, come on. So, 
these two should be in series because there's a conjunction there, right? When my little brother, I have two little brothers, but my littler brother, his, one of his phrases that we, we, we loved that he used to use when he was about five or six, we used to ask, we'd be like, Andrew, why is that true? And Andrew would say, cuz be why. So, uh, cuz be why. So like, why, why should these two series be in series? Cuz be why. I mean, but really the, the, uh, the and symbol there. Okay, so how do you get P or, um, P or Q? We want the P and the Q to be in parallel. So that is this piece, and then the S or the T, same thing. All right, like this. These, so this is both what I've written there. That's from um, P or, that's the P or Q, that's the S or T, the corresponding circuits, and then I put those in series. And so there you go, that would be a circuit of switches which would be logically equivalent to this logical sentence here. The only way for current to flow is if at least one of P or Q is closed, right? And if at least one of S or T is closed, then you can get all the way through, all right? Example three. Come on. Example three, we have, oh, goodness gracious. Sorry, my handwriting is slowly but surely devolving. We have P and parentheses, Q or R, close parentheses, close bracket, um, or Q and parentheses. Now, this parentheses I'm putting right here, your book doesn't always put that parentheses there. All right. But there we go. We're supposed to come up with a circuit which is like this. So the big point I would point out here is that there is a or that is joining these two compound statements. So that means we want basically the two things in brackets to be in parallel. All right. So uh, I'm going to do the, 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 the right one first. That one's easier. So Q in series with not P. All right. That gives me this one. And then the other one, I do P. And that is connected to Q or R. So I'm going to do a Q here like this and an R there like that. So those are in parallel. Um, like that. Does it matter which one goes on top? No, no, no. So this and then these two are parallel with each other. Like that. So you're like, does it have to look like that? No, it does not have to look like that. You could equally well do, you know, um, equivalent one would be, for example, you could put a Q down here, you could put not P down here, and then up here you could put P and then you know, um, Q and R like that. There's a lot of other things you could do which wouldn't change it. But, you know, these, these are the same. The, the, listen, guys, the, the trouble is um, there are properties <laughs> like and and or are commutative. A or B is the same as B or A. A and B is the same as B and A, so you can always like flip things around like that. But anyway, I think that's enough for these. I hope that's more than enough for you to understand the homework. Any questions? Okay.
All right. Oh, my computer decided to uh, take a break. <laughs> That's not helpful. All right. So, reminder. A statement is a declar declarative, I can't say declarative, a declarative sentence that's either true or false, but not both true and false, right? We also had open statements, which were true or false, but depending on a variable, right? Um, a simple statement is a statement that conveys a single idea. A compound statement is a statement that conveys two or more ideas, right? Oftentimes we connect simple statements with words or phrases such as and, or, if, or then, or if and only if, um, to make a compound statement, right? And then sometimes we compound those compound statements to make an even more compound statement. If we, I mean, we just looked at some circuit diagrams for things like that, yeah? So, move on here. This is all in the previous lecture, just reviewing. These are our typical connectives. We got, we've got the not, the and, the or, if then, the if and only if. Also known as negation, conjunction, disjunction, conditional, by, by conditional. We haven't really talked much about conditional and biconditional yet. We'll talk a little bit about those today. We'll talk more about them next week. All right. Um, so again, you know, Bool and his wonderful symbolic logic. We have these shorthands for all of these different logical operations. Very, very helpful. Um, all right. Remember, we can talk about a truth table. We'll be do, doing a lot more of that today. So the truth value of a simple statement is either true or false, all right? Um, and so here we have uh, the truth table for conjunction or logical and. Remember that P and Q is true only when what? When both P and Q are true, we get true. Otherwise, if there's one false or both false, the conjunction is false, right? In contrast, P or Q or disjunction it's true when either one of them is true, or both, right? So true, true, true. The only way it can be false is if they're both false. So that is logical conjunction versus logical disjunction. And these are examples of truth tables, all right? I thought it would be useful to have a slide which has the truth table for not just conjunction and um, disjunction, but it also has the truth table for, and this is, by the way, part of the reason I'm going to stop using PowerPoint, because there is no like easy way to find the double arrow, like in your book. And uh, when I look at your tech, yeah, when I look at the textbook slides, they've got like pictures <laughs> for, for, the, for these things. I don't know how they've got the mathematical symbols in there, but they've used, I don't know. There's probably some silly font which has it in it. I don't care. Um, it's I, I, I don't want to spend five hours sorting through words, ridiculous font choices to try to make you guys slides. It'd be better to just write on paper for you, which is what I'm going to start doing. Um, anyway, this is supposed to be just one continuous arrow. I don't know how to make that little thing go away, all right? So don't, don't read anything into it. It's just the best I could do. And um, anyway, this is the biconditional. The only way the biconditional is true is if both the input and the output match. I think of it input-output, but if P and Q both match, if they're both true, true, or false, false, that's true. Otherwise, if you have true, false, or false, true, biconditional is false. Um, conditional, on the other hand, is kind of interesting. Um, the one way that a conditional can be false is if true implies false. All right. So uh, false implies true is fine. Um, so let's see, I think a, a, an example would be like, um, if it's raining outside, then the ground is wet, right? So if it's raining, that would be the true, and ground outside being wet would be true. So like that would be like sort of the first case. So to think about, um, try to think, uh, if, um, oh, I, I'm sorry, why, why am I getting into that? I don't need to get into that at the moment, my, my bad. So. Examples like that are in next week's lecture, so let's, let's leave it for that. All right. <clears throat> so, I forgot my laser, so I'll do the next best thing.
All right. So this is the other notation for truth tables. I personally, I personally do not care for this notation, but your book has most of the discussion in this notation, so I am obligated to talk to you about it. Um, so the way this works, for example, here we're going to use, I, I call this the inside out truth table notation. Um, your book doesn't call it that, it just calls it alternate notation, whatever. Um, they actually have columns for the operations, all right? Like this. Now, so here's how it goes. We're trying to find the truth table for P or parentheses, not parentheses P and not Q. All right? So the starting point here for this truth table inside out method is you put down the truth values for your inputs P and Q, and then um, you also put the corresponding truth values for P and their, um, or their negations on the inside, all right, like that. That's step one in constructing the inside out truth table. Step two, you do the next thing that you can. So like given this, I can judge whether or not this conjunction is true or false, right? The only way for the conjunction to be true is what? Both of them must be true. Does that happen here? Oh, it does right here, right? So only this second row should the conjunction be true. See? Do, 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 true. Otherwise, false, false, false. Does that notation make sense? Okay, I mean, your book thinks it makes sense to more students because it's given it much more bandwidth in, your, in, your discuss in the discussion. So I, that, that gave me this, all right? Okay, then what's left? I can figure this out, right? So how is this judged? So it's this junction, right? So if either this is true, how do you judge the truth value of all this? What do you have to look at? You have to look at, oh, I think he did two things at once. Oh, that's sneaky rabbit. Let's see here. So, um, so we have false, true, false, false. Where did, where did these go? They came over and got us, they're numbered, right? Um, so like step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. So step five I haven't talked about yet. Step five is very easy though. It's the flip-flop, it's the um, true becomes false, false becomes true, Republican becomes Democrat. So you got like false goes to true, um, true goes to false, false goes to true, false goes to true, like that. That's negation, yep. Could you possibly like do it step by step I'm completely lost? Like I know it makes sense. I'll do another example, but yeah, we, we can, we'll, I will do another example on paper here in a minute, but in fact, I will, <clears throat> I will do this same example, but with the notation I used last week, and you can decide which one is easier for you to understand, all right? Um, maybe I'll pick something even simpler to illustrate the two methods, but all right. <clears throat> so. Again, you can follow the steps. This is step one, two, three, four, five. All right. Now, um, I mean, okay, it would be better if they had a separate picture for step four and step five, but I can only fit the three on here and yeah. sorry. Um, okay, so next up, we judge this one, all right? And to judge this one, we have to look at columns one and columns five. See, because five determines the truth value of all of this. See, all of this, true or false, is judged by the last operation which occurs, which in this case is that negation. So I look at true and true. Is that true for, um, for or? Yes. True and false, is that true for or? Yes. False and true, is that true for or? Yes. False and true, is that true for or? Yes. Remember, or or disjunction is true if either one of the things we're, we're putting together, if either one of them is true, disjunction is true, right? So very boring, true, 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 which is what we have over here. 
true, 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 true. All right. Um, oops. So again, these slides are posted so you can look at them again. And I, I suspect, uh, but I should, anyway, let, let me, let me finish up these slides and then I'll write stuff by hand just to, that'll make the flow go better here. Um, so a tautology is a statement that's always true, all right? Uh, in contrast, uh, a self-contradiction is a statement that's always false, all right? So here's some examples. The example we just did with the inside out truth table, the outcome of that was that no matter what P and Q are, it's always true, the statement. Uh, P or parentheses, not P and not Q. Um, that's a tautology because it's always true, no matter what P and Q are. All right, that's a tautology. Um, <laughs> when my son was about five or six, we, uh, we were on a trip and uh, I happened to have a quarter and uh, I, I told him, I said, you want to play a game? And he's like, okay. And so I was like, here's the deal. Heads I win, tails you lose. Are you ready? You got it? He's like, oh, okay. And I said, flip it. And I'm like, heads, oh, I win. And I flip it again. I'm like, tails, oh, I win. I mean, you lose. And then I flipped it again. I'm like, heads, I'm like, oh, I win. And tails, I'm like, oh, you lose. And um, <coughs> my son is really smart, but it, like, he didn't get it right away. <laughs> it's, not, I, that wouldn't work anymore. But um, that's an example of a tautology, right? Because like, I always win, essentially, <laughs> no matter what happens, right? Um, uh, it, essentially, that is the, it's a sentence which is in some sense equivalent to P or not P. Um, P or not P is like a rather well-known tautology because either P is true and not P is what? False, or P is false and not P is true. Either, wa either way, you're either doing true, tr true or false, or false or true, either way, the or with either uh, input being true is, is true. Um, uh, now the statement in contrast, no, there's a big difference here if we do or versus we do and. In other words, disjunction of P and not P is a tautology. Conjunction of P and not P is a self-contradiction because either this is true and that's false or this is false and that's true. So you've always got a false in your conjunction here in example seven, which means it's always false, which is a self-contradiction. All right, so just that. We should also talk a little bit about equivalent statements. Um, equivalent statements are statements which have the same um, identical truth values for identical inputs. In other words, two logical sentences are equivalent if their truth tables, output columns agree in all possible cases. I, I think this doesn't really comport with what we mean by equivalence in everyday speech because um, with this language, like any two tautologies are equivalent, right? So like this would say, um, I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, uh, I need two examples. So somebody give me a tautology. It's your chance. Anybody got a tautology they want to tell me? What's always true? Yeah. The dog has four legs. The dog has four legs. Yeah, I used to... Yeah, we've all seen something else, haven't we? <laughs> well, there are exceptions. <laughs> um, let's see here. The sun is bright. The what? The earth is round. Well, we have a class of 100 here. Odds of there being someone in here who thinks otherwise is about three, probably three people. Or wait a minute, no, your generation, something like one in 10? What's the, current, what's the current statistics on Flat Earth supporters? Fun fact, I voted for a politician who uh, was a flat earth, flat earth dude. I mean, 
Am I a flat earther? I mean, no, I personally believe in the cylindrical earth, but um, I'll tell you more later. Um, but I mean, yes, he believes in the flat earth and I understand his biblical reasons for doing such and so forth and you know, NASA does do some photoshopping, so to speak, on things. I get it. But for me, it didn't really matter because the rest of his, like, everything he had to say about issues that mattered to me, I was like, check, 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 check. And then I thought to myself, you know, he's going to be the governor of Alabama, so he probably really can't hurt NASA with any of his beliefs. Like, what does it matter? I can vote for him. So, yeah. So I'll, 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 what I'm trying to say is I, I, can, I, can, I can live peaceably with flat earthers. It's not a problem for me. Um, but I do tend to agree the earth is round. Yeah, it's probably true. Um, oblate spheroid, I suppose. But um, all right, we need to find two tautologies that are clearly un unarguably true just to illustrate what I'm saying about this equivalence. Like, okay, so a typical dog has four legs. <laughs> there we go, right? Um, uh, a human who's alive has a heart which is pumping, right? These are both tautologies ignoring weird extraneous cases, right? Okay? So that means they're logically equivalent. That's kind of, you know, I don't know. So. Uh, Equivalent statements, we also, uh, we also want them to have the same number of inputs. Maybe I'm violating that, that concept with those two tautologies we just talked about. I don't know. Um, anyway, people who care more about um, symbolic logic might have a more nuanced understanding of what equivalence means. All right. There's, there's something deeper there to ask. Because you want equivalence in like the, out, I mean, in the, a more nuanced way of thinking about it. You really do want it to be part of the same discussion, right? Not just that they're both generic truths, you know? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, so I think there's something missing from this introductory, inter introductory idea of equivalence. But anyway, here it is. So not P or, so here we're doing the negation of P or not Q, all right? And here is the truth table for not P and Q, all right? Um, so we'll, you know, tell me what we'll do. We're going to work these out on paper because there's no steps in any of the slides. This is just here's the answer. All right. So like the um, the steps leading to this are not given, although they, they number right. You do this first, and that, and then that, and then that. That's their their order of operations for filling out their table. Okay. But the the point here is the truth of this statement is judged by the last thing that's done, which is four in this one or three in that one. You compare those and check it out. You've got false, false, true, false. And over here, you've got false, false, true, false, which means that for the same inputs, they give you the same output. All right? So this is how I think about it. I think about P and Q as the inputs, and I think about the final column as the output. And, and I think of the logical statement as sort of a machine that takes in truth and false values and does some operation on them and decides whether or not altogether it's true or altogether it's false. Um, anyway, so these are equivalent statements and this is the notation for that. I um, usually verbalize this as equals equals equals, which is probably one too many equals, but anyway, it gives me joy to say it. So um, not parentheses P or not Q is equals 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 which I really should just say is equivalent to not P and Q. All right. Again, I need to come back and work that one out on paper. So you, you might need to remind me of that in about five minutes, okay? These are De Morgan's laws for symbolic logic. We saw them before at the level of what? We, we talked about De Morgan's laws before for sets a little bit, I think. Um, I'm teaching one other class that has set theory in it, so that's like clouding my mind a little bit. I have trouble sometimes separating which class I talked about what in. 
you guys aren't too bad. There's only one section of this class, mind you. I'm teaching four sections of college algebra. Do you know how hard it is to figure out whether or not you've done something in the fourth section that you teach of the same material? Like, it's, it's not good. Part of the reason I tape classes is so I can like go back and see, oh, I didn't do that in this section. <laughs> no, so anyway. Um, So, all right, so anyway, these are De Morgan's laws which state that the negation of a disjunction, all right, is the conjunction of the negations. And the negation of a conjunction is the disjunction of the negations. So it, see it flips, negation flips the and to or and vice versa like this. Again, we could prove these using a truth table. Maybe we'll do that. All right, in class exercise one. So the logical statement P implies Q is equivalent, is it, question? Is it, I, I'm guessing, I'm making a statement. Is the, if I could read my own sentence, is the logical statement P implies Q is equivalent, oh, come on, good grief, oh well, I tried, um, is, I think I'm missing an it, is it equivalent to not Q implies not P? Construct a truth table for not Q implies not P and compare it to the truth table for the conditional, all right? All right, before, before I go to the next thing and activate the quiz. The top, there's a top hat quiz here. Let me switch back over to the, um, the, the, the document camera here and try to write one out for you. Huh, that's funny. All right, so let's do, um, Not, so we're trying to do the truth table for uh, not Q implies not P. The question is this equivalent to um, PQ like this. All right, so I'll remind you, this one, the truth table for this was what? So here's P, here's Q. Here's P, Q. So this was, I had, this was one of those slides I did earlier. Um, just a second here, I need to remind myself which order I put things in. True, 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 false. True, 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 false. False, true. Um, false, false. Be careful when you're making two truth tables to compare to make your possibilities in the same order. If I, do an, if I did another one over here, you know, and I do P and Q in a different order, all right, so you'll forgive me. I'm not going to use the inside out method here. I'm going to use the um, the other. Um, let's call this the left to right method. All right. All right, so it starts out. These are the input columns. All right. Now, by definition, by definition here, we know what goes here, right? If you go back to slide earlier in my lecture, I told you back in like slide number, oh man, there's no number on this thing. The one I had the four grids, um, I mentioned the conditional, it goes um, true, false, true, true. True, false, true, true, all right. All right, so I want to do not Q implies not P. So I need a not Q column. 
I would like a not p column. All right, so you guys tell me what goes in the not q column? False true. False true. False true. Very good. So that's based on the Q column, right? And how about the not P column? How's that look? False, false, true, true. False, false, true, true. That is correct. Can you explain why? That's negation. Negation change, oh. changes true to false and false to true. And so the question is, what are we negating? In the case of the P column, we're negating this one, right? And the case of the Q column is this to that, yeah. I don't know why I'm going over here. I could just <laughs> <laughs> dummy. All right, me, not you. And um, okay, so then finally, uh, finishing blow here. We have not Q, not P. Now this one we're going to have to think a little bit about. Okay. So how do you judge whether or not the implication of not Q implies not P is true or false? So we need to look at how it's defined, right? Over here, it's actually right here. P implies Q, right? So in the only way that this, let's, let's just, just focus on, the only way it can be false is what? If you have a true and false, right? So do we have true and false for the inputs? No. Right there, so that would be false, right? Mm -hmm. How about this? Uh, false and false, false is true. So this right here, I'm judging by this over here. All right, that's how I know that false, I false implies false is true, because by definition, false implies false is true. So I read this, guys. The way I read this is, quote unquote, P implies Q, just to have a way to verbalize it, all right? And that's the usual language. False true. Is the implication false implies true? Is that true or false? That's true. How about true implies true? That's true. So are these logically equivalent statements? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, I think I just did your top hat quiz for you. I'm sorry. Um, so you compare this and this and say, bingo, have match, right? So these are logically equivalent. Not Q um, implies not P. Really? <laughs> I will change that. I have been told it's explicit. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, equivalent. Somebody in one of my other classes is like, you listen to Dre? I'm like, not really. Is that Dr. Dre? Oh, yeah, all right. I mean, I forgot about Dre. Let's see here. So, yeah. Now, what do you mean? This, this and. So, wh wh which one are you referring to here? For the conditional. <laughs> For the conditional, this is, th th what we have on the right hand side here, this is actually the definition. This, this right here is the definition of the conditional. Yeah. So, um, I really can't answer why it is that true implies true is true, if true implies false is false, false implies true is true, false implies false is true. I mean, th these are the definitions of this logical operation. I mean, I could give you sentences to try to make it more plausible, and we'll do that next time, actually. Um, but that's the definition. Now, over here, uh, since I'm judging this conditional over here, I can use the definition to, like, fill in this last column. That's what I did. Like, false, if I have, is false implies false, is that true? Well, it's true because, over here, I'm told false implies false is true. So I guess it's just the orders of True 
right? So like if you say, um, you know, if, if, um, if you pay for top hat, then you have top, ac top hat access, right? Um, and then somebody, and then you pay for top hat access, and I say, no, you don't have any access. I would be violating the conditional, right? But if I say, if you pay for top hat, you get top hat access, and you get free top hat access, I haven't violated my conditional because you didn't pay for it and not get it, right? So that's okay. I mean, this is the idea of a conditional. It's, it's when, when false implies, tr excuse me, when true implies false, when, you, when you've met the precondition for the conditional and that yet the, you know, the result is not met, that's when it's false. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, we, we talk about antecedent and precedent next class, but leave that for next class. Let me not do that here. Um, there is more to say to your, qu to your question. Listen, um, so let me get back to the top hat. I will eventually learn to multitask. Let's see here. Come on, you can do it. I, I'm not, well, I, I, I devoted two minutes to this, which now seems kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Let me go back to the one I said I'd write out. Which one was it? It's not working? It won't load. Well, I have, it, it's, I, huh, that's funny. I've got 60, I mean, I believe you. You are unlucky. I have 70 now that have answered. Oh, it's just too many people. The sixth time. So what's the, uh, what's the definition of insanity? Ex accepting the same outcome, well, we except expecting a different outcome, try, expecting a different outcome but trying the same thing. Except, yeah, expecting a different outcome but trying the same thing. But so, in other words, um, just temporary insanity for doing the top hat quiz um, if you're not logging on. So sorry. Anybody still trying? All right. Well, there's 20 seconds, it's done. Um, let me see if I can close this thing. Time is running out, oh no. <laughs> All right, come on. All right, what's it do? Stop answering. All right, here we go. Now how do I get out of here? Well, that's not cool. <laughs> it took me out of the presentation. You dummy. Not you guys. Top hat. I'm talking about top hat. All right. Well, I think we already did that. All right. In class exercise two is the logical statement P implies Q equivalent to not Q and P. I'm going to help you guys again. So we're going to look at, I'm going to write over here. Let's make the truth table for not Q and P. And I will attempt to do the inside out method. Are you going to put yeah, I am. I'm just letting you guys write down. I think we got it. So thank you for asking that. <laughs> All right, so come on. You can do it. You can do it. All right, here we go. So we got P, we got Q. All right. 
And um, I guess the thing, the thing I don't like about the inside out method is I have to decide how many columns for the whole thing at the beginning. And that's just annoying. I like to be able to think step by step. And I, I, this, is what it, this is what's aggravating me about this method. So um, I, need a, um, a, I need a not Q column. I need a, an, um, an OR column and a, a, a P column. All right. So you start by filling out the PQ just like we did before. Right? So that's one, two. Then what should we do next? We'll do three which will be to fill out Q again. All right. And then, yeah, I, okay, so that I, that's number three. Um, number four, well, I don't know. I'll put four over here, four. Uh, the, the P, which is T, T, F, F. All right. Now, um, we have to do the negation first. All right. So, like, technically, I could put parentheses like that to emphasize that comes first. All right. Um, so, not Q. I put under the negation, I do right there. Right. So, this is going to be five. What do I put here? False. True, false, true. All right. Now, six. Right? How do we decide whether six is true or false? What do we need for six? What are we comparing? We need to look at, we look at what? We look at five and four. Right? And we use the conjunction truth table. Right? In other words, we use conjunction, all right? So it's helpful to have that memorized just to make these things faster. What does conjunction say? It says it's only false, excuse me, it's only true if they're both true, right? Otherwise it's false. So as I look at, as I look at um, five and four here, the only way, let's say I've got False and fa false and true, true and true, uh, false and false, true and false. Um, so the only way I can get that conjun the conjunction is true is in the second row right here. The other ones are all false because there's at least one or the other of them that's being conjoined is false. Right. So that right there is the the output of the truth table. I, I think it's useful on the same piece of paper for me to show you the other way of doing truth tables. And I, I, listen, guys, like going forward, I think I'm going to ignore the book because I, I, I just like this method immensely. I, I tried to follow it. I have to follow it a little bit because unfortunately, I put these problems in your homework. But in my heart on the quiz and on the test, I really want to avoid the inside out notation because I don't, I just, I personally find it to be very confusing. Um, now, you can disagree. Maybe you like to do things inside out. I don't know. Um, but here's how the same truth table looks in the other notation. So what I would do is I would just do not Q for one. That would be F true, F true, like that. And then I would just jump straight to not Q and P for my final column. And so to figure out the final column, not Q and P, I just look at these two, all right? So true, false, true and false is false. True and true is true. False and false is false. False and true is false using the conjunction. And so like the, the difference is, right guys, the answer for the statement altogether is right here, all right? The answer in some sense for the other one is here. And I just, really dislike the answer for the truth table not being in the final column. It just grates 
my mathematical sensibilities. I really like the answer to be here. You know, what was, so uh, this begs back to the question, is this logically equivalent to what? What was the whole question at the start? Is it logically equivalent to P implies Q? What was P implies Q? Yeah, it was right here, right? So here's, here's the other one. Remember, true, false, true, true. What do we have here? False, true, false, false. Are they the same? No. They're not. Therefore, they are not logically equivalent. So, um, you know, not equivalent. Different truth table output. Sorry, I'll bring markers next time. My handwriting is way better in markers. Um, so here's the, uh, let me start the question. There you go. I put two minutes for this. So true or false, the logical statements were equivalent. We decided it is false. You have, well, all right. We're getting there. Hopefully this won't take two minutes. <laughs> eight minutes. Why are you guys packing up? I guess I need to give Top Hat two minutes to collect a hundred answers, don't I? <laughs> I don't think it takes you guys two minutes to answer the quiz. I think it takes two minutes for all of you to be able to log on to Top Hat and to put in an entry. Yeah. Mm. Which kind of defeats the whole purpose of doing quizzes like this, doesn't it? It does, just a little bit for me. Hmm. All right, so while we're waiting, let's try a different truth table. Let's try P. I don't think I'm going to get back to that one. Is it okay? You don't understand anyway. So I'm trying to, let's see here. Um, sadly, I just can't look at it because the stupid top hat is top hatting. I can't look at the, oh, yeah. I can't get back to what I wanted to look at. All right, enough of this. I'm closing it. Sorry if you didn't get it. Come on. All right, so the, the one, it was, um, the question was not, not P, parentheses P or not Q is it equivalent to not P and Q all right so I'll make I'll make the truth table this time so <clears throat> So instead of, the inside out method is in the slide. You can look at it if you want. Let me show you how I would do it in the way I think is, is easier to understand. So P, Q. So I just operate basically left to right. I start by putting my input columns. True, true. True, false. Just, it's 